friends, and welcome back to Ungroundable with me, Lisa Schwartz, and my mom, who unfortunately is still at home sick, but she is here in spirit, ladies and gentlemen, which kind of makes it sound like she's um, like in heaven watching over us, but she's just heavenly at home in her pajamas eating soup. Today, we have a crazy episode for you. I am telling you, my jaw has dropped the whole time, so uh, hold on to your little hats. This is going to get crazy because we have... The incomparable Leah A. Finn, uh, who has been around on YouTube with me since the beginning of time, and she has so many crazy stories to share with y'all. Uh, for those of you who might not know her, she is an interior designer who has done so many fantastic things. So um, usually I prep what you guys are going to hear, but instead I'm going to leave it as a surprise so that you can experience what I just experienced. <laughs> Get ready, this one's wild. Here we go. Your parents only knew of the shit you used to do. You be grounded for a long, long time. Hi, welcome. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you too. How many years has it been? It's been a long time. Do you recognize this piece behind me? Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Now we're you, really, wow. You have picked out some of the most iconic pieces that are still in my home. Like you oh laid God. the groundwork for my home um, and I've just like built on it and moved things around. But truly like you have left your mark here and I think about I it that. often. Oh well, yeah. No, I think that's amazing because those great pieces. So we got you some vintage pieces and they really do like transcend time. And not only do they look great, but they also are made really well. Like they've already lasted like 50 years. So they'll last like another 150. So like, you're good girl. You're never going to have to buy another one of those again. Thank you so much. And I hit you up on Instagram recently and I was like, we're ready. We want to have a big old house like you guys have, um, which I want you to explain to everyone what's going on with you. Um, but you were like, come on down. Like, I'm ready yeah. for you to like redo a whole nother home for me. So get I'm ready. Right. Okay. First of all, are you still like, we have so much to catch up on. I mean, it's I been know. like 10 years. It's been like 10 years, right? Which is why, I mean, you've had two children. Yes. I've had two, I've had two children. Yeah. I've had two children. I've uh, moved back home to, to Austin, Texas. Yes. Um, you've had many a TV show success. Yeah, We've had many a TV show since then. I mean, gosh, so much. It's so funny though. So my husband was like, I was like, Hey, yeah, I'm doing this podcast with Lizbug. And he goes, Lizbug? Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't think he'd remember at all, but he totally <laughs> did. He was like, that's right. Oh, my God. She was so funny. Didn't she do that? My butt is on fire song. I did. Wow. And that's what he that's what he knows you from. So, yay. Um, that's hysterical. That's what my God kids uh, know or their favorite song now. They sing it to me all the time and they think it's hysterical. Yeah. Little kids love potty humor. They sure do. And so do I. <laughs> well, I, the, it reminded me though. I'm like, oh man, maybe I need to show my little boys that because uh, they would love it. They would love it. Well, it's since been taken down because times <laughs> have changed on the internet, <laughs> as you know. So much um, is no longer quite appropriate, right, you know, as sure. we evolve and grow. And so um, I'll pull it out of the archives for your kids though. Yeah, yeah. So just send if me a text they... with a link or something. You got it. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy to have you here. And I want, before we like dive into these stories, well, first and foremost, mom is so sad to be missing this because you have also decorated her home with so many pieces that are still in her home as well. I You've love left it. big marks on our family. Oh, that's amazing. But before we like really dive into the stories, I want our viewers to kind of hear about, and I would like to learn a little bit more about your childhood and like just sort of set the tone for us because what I think is great as we go into these stories is your your show right now that you have is with your mom and dad right yes and they're they've been divorced for 30 something years yeah first of all love that I love yeah. a co-parenting friendship moment I think that's it wasn't beautiful. always that way it wasn't <laughs> No. Well, yeah, set the tone for us just sort of like where you grew up, what what life was like, what your parents were like 
towards each other and towards you. And just so we kind of get a idea before we really dive into these stories. So how much time do we have? And do you have a drink handy? Because this is a, you're not even going to believe this story. <laughs> I'm fact, already obsessed with it. I don't think that many people know this story. I should probably like share my story a little bit more, but I, I just haven't because it's really, you won't, won't believe it. So um, I was born in Austin, Texas. My parents divorced when I was, was three years old. Oh, and, wow. um, yeah, and they hated each other. So it was like one of my earliest memories is my mom telling me to tell my dad that he's anal retentive. Oh, and, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was like, I, I was probably like four and like, I had no idea what that meant, but I was like, okay, it sounded mean. Like they hated each other. He went on to get remarried, like probably pretty soon after that. And she kind of had just like a string of boyfriends and at let's see, how old was I? At eight years old, we moved, my mom and I moved to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. No, really? Yeah. So she told me like, I thought we were just going on vacation. Like we didn't yes, really that's what talk I was gonna about say. It. Like we just, we went down there, we had a whole bunch of bags and like, we just didn't come home. And I remember being so devastated about it because there was not a McDonald's. <laughs> That was like my big beef with us moving to Mexico. And like, just there was, I had no access to McDonald's. There has so, to be a McDonald's there now, right? Well, yeah, there's a McDonald's. Okay. There's every, it's basically Cabo is like Southern California now. But when I moved there, it was in 1993. And it was like a podunk, like fishing village town with a very wow. small American, like expat population. So we went down there literally on vacation. and. We just stayed. She got a job selling timeshare. Yeah. And how my dad like let all this slide back in the United States, like, that's cool. You can just move my daughter internationally, whatever. But he was busy with his own stuff. So, um, so yeah, I lived in Mexico from age like eight to 14. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, me entiendo más de lo que puedo hablar. No, I, I can like a little, if I have a little bit of like tequila, like it comes racing back. It's weird. <laughs> All the memories. Flooded. Yeah. Because I used to be fluent. Like I could write it, I could speak it, but not anymore. You know, I just, which is some, it's sad. I wish I had like stayed up on that. Cause what a great yeah. skill. Oh but my gosh. Totally. I do have a really good accent. So like with the little bit of broken Spanish that I do know sounds really legit. And so anytime I like break it out, they, they person will be like, Oh, bruh, 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 like right back at me. And I'm like, no, nope, got nothing. <laughs> no. Nope. So, um, yeah. So I lived there for a six years, something like that. Wow. During that time, um, <laughs> My mom, I, okay. My mom had another series of boyfriends down there and we moved around a lot down there, but I loved it. I had a horse and I had all my friends and I would go, um, horseback riding on the beach, like bareback without a saddle. And then at the end of the ride, like my horse and I would go into the waves together and like swim. Yeah. Stop it. It was honestly like idyllic, like ridiculous and tourists would come up on boats and like be taking pictures be like what is this white girl doing out swimming with this horse I feel like this is an 80s movie like for sure well just it keeps it gets better so she has a lot of boyfriends and um she has one particular boyfriend um and has my sister so my sister is 10 years younger than me And she was born in La Paz, which is like basically the biggest city closest to Cabo because they didn't have like a good hospital in Cabo at the time. So we had to drive three hours north up the Baja to have my sister delivered. And oh my gosh, uh, we're 10 years apart, right? So I was basically raised as an only child. And I remember when my mom told me that she was pregnant with my sister, I slammed my head on the table and went, how could you do this to me? Yeah. So of course <laughs> that relationship got off to a really great start. I'm sure. I'm sure. How many times did you try yeah. to drown her? Yeah, I know it wasn't, it wasn't great, but you know, I, I think a lot of it was, I didn't like the uh, boyfriend that my mom's mm. boyfriend, that my sister's dad and just in an effort to save time, that relationship sort of took a turn for the worst with, with my mom and him. And he and I didn't get along at all. And he's American. So both of my parents, both Both of them are American, my sister's parents, but we were all living in Mexico. And because she was born in Mexico, 
she's a Mexican citizen. That's how she's considered. Oh, sure. So they break up and her dad didn't like that very much. And my mom started dating somebody else. And God, I'm making my mom out to sound like just a hussy. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Just, I've heard this from many of friends okay. whose moms have done I'm the like, dating. Is she here? I'm like, is she here? Oh, she's is not she coming bring to get her, her dog. Out. Oh, she loves the camera. Anyways, so <laughs> so sister's dad did not like that my mom had moved on and started kind of doing like violent threats, all this stuff. And so new boyfriend decided that it would be a great idea if we moved (laughs) to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Yeah. Did you guys own homes or were you renting this whole time? I'm like concerned about the homes. Okay. No, you, I, Americans can't really own homes in Mexico. It was, it's like, I mean, you can, but it's like only for like 90 years. There's all this stuff. So we all just always just rented. Okay. So I remember my mom's door being closed for like a week to her bedroom. And that was really odd because we were, were super open. And and then one morning she woke me up and I thought she was waking me up for school. And she goes, we're going to the airport. And I went, what are you talking about? She goes, your sister and I are going to the airport. And um, we're going to go in Tim and Tim's, Tim is the boyfriend. Tim's going to follow behind us with my sister, McKaylee. And we're going to the airport. You're going to stay with Tim. You have three days to say goodbye to your friends. And then you're going to meet us. Oh, my God. In the United States. Oh, my God. So my sister's dad was, like, threatening us and, like, having people surveil us. So we're on our way to the airport. And I'm, like, I'm 14 years old. I'm I'm in a relationship. Like, I have the love of my life. Like, I'm so happy. Like, What about the horses? The The horses. All of it. So I had, like, such a life there. So... We're driving to the airport and it's my mom and I in the front car and my, the boyfriend and my sister in the car behind us, caravanning to the airport. And I'm just like in shock, like what is happening? And then all of a sudden this car pulls up beside us and it's two Mexican men and they start waving guns at us and forcing us. I swear to God, I swear to God, (laughs) I swear to you. This uh, is like a lifetime movie and then some. Keep it going. And I've never shared this story ever publicly. Isn't that weird? Well, I mean, Maybe it's like just to, so... I know. It's, it's so huge. It's so huge. Yeah, it, gets, it keeps going too. So um, they pull us over. They, they push us off, off to the side of the road, pull us over. They arrest my mom. And these were like the bad cops that they're called judiciales. They're like the guys that you can like pay off to do like whatever you want, like people disappear and shit. So they arrest my mom, they put her in the car and they take her back to Cabo. And I don't know why anybody thought this was a good idea, but they left me, who's never driven, to drive the car home, back to town. And this is like on a highway, I'd never driven. You're 14, right? Yeah, I was 14. Um, Oh my God. So we drive back to the house. My mom, you my drove mom, like, the car. yeah. And I don't know why I drove the car. I, I, I don't know, but it wasn't, I, I remember it not being much of more of an option. So my mom ends up getting out of jail because she knew a judge and, um, my, uh, my, uh, mom's boyfriend, his name's Tim hired security guards, bodyguards. And we went back to the airport the next morning with security, like full detailed security. They got on an airplane, my sister and my mom, and left the country, like just straight left. And then I had like two days to say goodbye to my friends, but they wouldn't, my, I, and I was staying with a friend, but they wouldn't let me out of the house because they were afraid that I was going to get kidnapped. And then it would be like a, I'll give you your kid for my kid kind of a thing. So it was like totally devastating. I had to say goodbye to all my friends, like in 24 hours, my boyfriend, everything. And it was like, I remember them telling me, don't worry, we'll be back in three months. So I got on a plane with the boyfriend, Tim, my mom's boyfriend at the time. And the next thing I knew I was getting, and mind you, I lived in Mexico for six years. Like I had no shoes, no shirt, no problem. Okay. <laughs> I get off the plane. I'd have like, never seen snow. And we get off the plane in Boston, Massachusetts in October. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah. Culture shock for everyone. Huge. Yeah. And we go down to the vineyard. I've never been any of these places before. We go like, like they like rented a house. They clearly had no intention of going back to Mexico. 
and they enroll me in high school. I've never been in a high school before. Like I was always homeschooled. So I was like very overwhelmed and like Columbine had happened. So I was like very traumatized by like the Uh idea of like this big Uh school. So a couple months pass and then there's like a knock at our door and my mom gets served papers for kidnapping. And oh my God. Yeah. She, because my sister's Mexican, even though she's born to both parents. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. And so a huge trial ensued and, um, I almost had to testify against the ex-boyfriend. I really, really wanted to, but at the last minute they, they said no, but I was like, ready to go. I'm like this motherfucker. Anyways, my sister got deported at four years old back to Mexico. Yeah. Dude. I, okay. Listen, I, <laughs> you were not ready for this. You were not for, ready yeah, for like this. First and foremost, like I'm not usually speechless and like my jaw, <laughs> if you guys are just listening to this, please head over to Patreon and check out like my jaw has just been dropped. And like, this is fucking wild. The, yeah. This is a wild. I've heard a lot of wild stories. This yeah. is beyond. It's so weird. So one. She's deported. So at four years old, my sister was deported back to Mexico because she was a Mexican citizen. The judge here deemed that she was a Mexican citizen, even though both of her parents are American citizens. So obviously my mom is not going to just let my four-year-old sister go by herself. So my mom goes back down to Mexico and they, oh. what, what ensues is it like a 10 year court battle in the Mexican courts for the custody of oh. my sister. Oh. And we had, she had full security the whole time we were there, like bodyguards, like everything, because again, like you can just pay people to do crazy shit down there. And wait, so all 10 years of this going on, you had to go back or it was a so back and forth we situation? split up. So my, my mom and sister went to Mexico and I went to live with family friends on Martha's Vineyard. Oh my God. So I didn't even live with my, my family at the time. I thought about going to live with my dad, but he was married to an awful human at the time and just somebody that we just didn't get along and she didn't really like me and she just didn't want me. And so I stayed on Martha's Vineyard and literally lived with a couple that were in their sixties. It was just, which actually turned out to be a blessing. Like I, I was pretty all in- through high school. Yeah. All through high school. Okay. Okay. I had a meltdown at one point and they sent me back to Mexico to be with my mom for a few months. And, and this whole time, by, by the way, I had a boyfriend down there, that same boyfriend, but 14, like my first love, like the whole wow. thing. So we stayed together the whole time. And at, um, 17 years old, I was like, Fuck all you guys. Can I cuss on this, by the way? Oh, fucking yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, good. I love to cuss. Okay. I was like, fuck <laughs> all you too. bitches. Like, I'm not dealing with your drama. And so I decided to graduate high school in three years. Yeah. And um, I got the hell out of Martha's Vineyard. No, nothing against Martha's Vineyard. It just wasn't my jam. Like, um, I wanted to be with my boyfriend. I wanted to be somewhere where it was warm. Um, and I had just had enough of, like, the family drama. And sure. right, the summer that I moved out, I moved to California. I moved to San Diego when I was 17. I moved across the country and was like, I'm just going to go live with my boyfriend in San Diego at 17, which thinking back on it, who lets their kids It's crazy. Do that? It's but, crazy. But how you must have been so mature at that point because you had to grow up so fast. Like, exactly. On. And like, I remember like, I couldn't even open a bank account without having, because I was a minor, without having my boyfriend sign, yeah. be a co-signer on my bank account because he wasn't a minor. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the summer that I left home at 17 was the summer my mom was finally able to move back to the States with my sister. And I just was like, I just want no part of it. Like, I love you guys, but I I just can't, I can't do this. So at 17, I struck out on my own in sunny Southern California in San Diego and yeah, lived with my boyfriend and yeah, all the things. And then it kind of gets normal after that. I mean, there's a lot of weird fight, fight family dynamics. Um, but but now your mom and dad are friendly with each other. Yeah. So, yes. So my dad had a lot of like personal problems. He was an alcoholic for most of my childhood. And um, it wasn't until about my late, like mid-20s that he got sober. And so those earlier times were really tumultuous, like for, for all of us. And so, sure. you know, we just weren't, we weren't close. Like I would come visit, I would come back to Texas and like visit, like, I don't know, once or twice a year, like once in the summer, once for Christmas. And that was it. We really didn't have that much of a relationship. And, um, it wasn't until I had my son 
honestly, my first child oh, wow. that we kind of oh, wow. got the opportunity to reconnect. And then obviously when we decided to, to leave LA um, and move back to Texas permanently, um, then yes, we, we started, we got a chance to, to have a whole new relationship, which was really good. And he divorced that awful woman. So that was good too. And, he, and now he's like an iconic character. Yeah. So Builder Gary. He's, Builder Gary, yeah, right? Yeah. Builder Gary. So my dad <laughs> has been in the home construction business for like 50 years. So the man knows everything. And he's kind of like the dad. And it's funny to say this because we weren't close growing up, but he's kind of like the dad that like you need to have. Like, like there's so many millennials and young people buying homes, but like, did you know when to change your air filters? I didn't. No. Exactly. My dad never taught me that. But the funny thing is, is now we're having this like reunited relationship and he's teaching me all these things. And I'm like, oh my God, dad, everybody needs to know this. Like every young homeowner needs to know that their air filter needs to be changed, that your dryer can start a fire if the vent isn't cleaned out properly in the back. Right. And like how to do all these things. Like, did you know there's a filter in the dishwasher that you have to clean? I didn't know that either. I, it's like, so we started an Instagram account for him at Builder Gary, and he gives all these Builder tips, Gary. like how to winterize your home so the pipes don't break, like just dumb stuff. And he's so funny. He's like, this is like uh, just common sense, Leah. I'm like, no, it's not. Like people are not told this. No, they are not. They are Until not Until your house catches on fire and then you have to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. And then you wish you had listened to Builder Gary. So- um, Sincerely. Yeah. That was like a lot crammed into <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> Oh my, well, first and foremost, thank you for sharing You're because <laughs> that is beautiful. And like, you are so well adjusted. I would have never like, I, had a lot I mean, of therapy. awesome. You know, I think therapy is fucking yeah. great. And I think if you I have agree. the chance to do it, like do it. Like, even if you don't even yeah. think anything's wrong with you, like, it's just so great. So that, that really that really helped. And then also, yeah, like I just had to grow up fast. So it was like, all right, let's just do this. <laughs> so, I mean, with that, my question is, were there things that you kept from your parents? Because it seems like, it seems like your parents were so obviously very preoccupied yeah. with so much other stuff that I imagine it was easy to get away with stuff. Yes, absolutely. But the problem with me is like, I'm an Aquarius and I'm like a true uh -huh. Aquarius and I want everyone to like me. And so the thought of like disappointing my parents is like worse than any, like any kind of discipline they could ever do to me, like ground me or anything. Like it's just the idea of like, oh, I let you down is like, murder on the inside. So I was totally actually always that. a really good kid. I, there was one incident that my dad still doesn't know about. And you asked me, you're like, don't, does Builder Gary want to be on the show? I'm like, nope, he doesn't, he doesn't want to know about this. He still doesn't want to, <laughs> I don't want him to know about this. Well, this one, sh shout out to Builder Gary. Yeah, so Builder Gary, if you're watching, please turn off your phone. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Do, am I, am I telling the story now? Please. Okay. So I first have to, I have to give the backstory. Like when you first asked me to come on this podcast, I didn't really, I didn't understand the concept. I just saw you and your mom having so much fun. And I was like, Oh my God, sign me up. Absolutely. And then I got the brief and it was like, you have to tell this story. And I was like, <gasps> like literally panic. And I almost was like, I don't think I can do this, but I'm so glad I did. So I'm so glad you did. Oh my God. This is like therapy. Okay. Well, let's just get it all out there. Let it out, girl. Okay. Let it out. So that boyfriend that I had down in Mexico, he... Yeah. When did that end, by the way? Like, so, I love this love story. Oh yeah. It was, it was a pretty intense love story. And it was really intense. Um, I basically fell in love with him when I was nine years old. And he was like four years older than me. And we didn't start dating until I was like... I want to say like 12 or something, but we ended up being together for six years. Wow. Yeah. And it was like really intense. Like you and I forever, the only ever ones, you know, like, and I still, I still really love him. And like, he will always have a special place in my heart because he was sort of the one constant for me when there was right. so much turmoil going on in my life. So he, uh, was blowing glass. That was one of his hobbies and cool. Yeah. Super cool. And he loved to blow pipes, right? Like, you know, and they would like change. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. That's what you do when you're like 
in your teens. And I, I don't even know. So he's in Mexico. Okay. Blowing glass and making these like beautiful black glass pipes and bongs and accoutrements. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, honestly impressive yeah. for a teenager. Yeah. He was like 17 at the time. So he was like, Ooh. yeah. So, um, I thought, well, I've got this great idea, this, you know, I've always been a little entrepreneurial, right? So I'm like, well, what if I take the pipes back to the States and I'll sell them for you? I'll sell them for you (laughs) at my school, at my high school. Oh, no. Yeah. And that ne- never crossed my mind that that could be like a felony. Like <laughs> it never is it a felony? I, it's, it's it's high up there. I I, I I'll explain more, but it, it's you're in deep shit, basically. I and I never thought about it, Lisa. I just thought like, oh my god, I'll sell your pipes. I, all my friends will buy them because they're cool. I mean, so smart, Super honestly, smart. very smart, right? Very and then smart. I'll send you the money, and we can have this like business going, right? Like when I come to the states, yes. I'll take your pipes. Like it's great. So I start selling his pipes at my high school in Martha's Vineyard. And I literally think nothing of it. I never, it never crossed my mind. And I remember. Because it's just glass, it's right? Just glass. But I guess. It's drug paraphernalia. I mean, that's what it is. Okay. It's drug. Do you have to be 18 to buy drug paraphernalia? I don't know the rules. Okay. And in Texas, you can do okay. whatever the hell you want. So who knows? Sure, sure. Um. But this was all in Massachusetts. So, I, you know, it's a good question. And the laws could have been different back then. I think you do now that you like, it's like ringing a bell. I think so. But also, like, it could be considered tobacco, like a tobacco. Like, I mean, you don't have to smoke weed out of it, right? Like, I, right. I don't know. So <laughs> I don't. Yeah. But you were like carrying it across the border, too. 100% carrying it across the border. <laughs> Never thought anything about that either. And um, so I remember I so I'm selling these pipes, right? And look, words getting out, right? Like, oh, Leah's got like this cool, cool hookup. Cool. Yeah, she's so cool. She's got this cool, you know, like a uh, Mexican American boyfriend. So, anyways, and I walk into school one morning, and the vice principal is like standing at the end of the hall, and he's just, and it was this long hall to my locker. Of course, of course. And I also decided to just keep them in my locker so that I would just not forget to bring them for the sales I was making. <laughs> So I'm walking down the hall and this vice principal is just giving me like this stink eye and I'm walking each step I'm taking, I'm I'm walking closer and closer and closer to him. And you know, and I know know. it hits me and I'm like, and and like, that was the moment I was like, maybe this is illegal. Like it was like that moment where I was like, maybe this wasn't a good idea. (laughs) So he grabs me and he's like, have you been selling drug paraphernalia on our campus. And I was like, I mean, there's no, I'm yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Like there's no, like, no, they're in my locker. They had like picked the lock, got them all out. So they had like all the evidence took me to the principal's office. And again, so here's my like kick in of like, I've disappointed someone. Right. So I, and just burst into tears, like totally bawling really. And I, and I just kept being like, I didn't know, like, I didn't realize this was you know, like, I think that's fair. I mean, I was so young and stupid. Like we all were back then. Right. Like, and I just remember him kept saying like the police were going to come because, Oh, your heart. Your yeah. Heart. And I'm like, and, and I'm literally like, how did I get myself into this? Like, I am not this person. Okay. I, this, I, I am not the person to really sneak out. Like, honestly, I was, this is when I was living with that family. So my, my parents weren't even in the, like, my mom wasn't even in the country at the time. My dad was off with the ex wife. Like, so, um, they were just, they were basically like, you are really lucky that there's nothing in it because essentially yeah. you'd be expelled, you'd be expelled and we would press charges against you. And I'm dying. Okay. I've spent the last few weeks, like months just sitting around with this old lady that I lived with. And we were doing like, she would taught me how to knit and bake. Like that's, I wasn't going out. I wasn't partying. Uh-huh. Like I, I, I like did not like the people I went to school with I found nothing in common with them, you know? Cause they were like typical normal high school people. And I was like, I, I, I go to the clubs in Mexico. Yeah. Been okay? there, like, done I don't that. got yeah. time for this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is not me. Right. Like, so, but I remember them being like, we are not going to call the police today because there wasn't anything in them, but you are being, um, w- w- I got kicked out for 10 days, suspended for 10 days. And I had to do, um, like 
I don't know, 50 hours of community, community service. service. Oh yes. my God. And like, I, I remember like they had to, t- I remember telling the people I live with and she laughed. She thought it was hysterical. Thank God. And then oh, she was like, God. We, she's like, we do have to tell your mom. And I'm like, okay. But also at that point, I'm like, what is she going to do and say, I mean, she's in Mexico for Christ's sake. And, but we never told my dad, I was like, we can't ever tell my dad about this. And he still doesn't know about that. <laughs> Does it feel good to like get it off your chest a little bit? Um, yeah, but I still feel naughty talking about it. Like, you know, <laughs> how much money did you make? How much money oh, I did, did you make? Good. I don't remember, but I remember being like, this is a great idea <laughs> until it wasn't. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's way better than babysitting. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's a brilliant plan. Yeah, it was pretty. I thought it, I thought it was brilliant, but you're going to have to teach your kids uh, these life Like, lessons. If you're going to get in trouble, at least get in trouble for like starting a business. We love that. Yeah. We love a business like, moment. It, You've been a business gal yeah, from the like start. Like at least there was some initiative behind it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. We see the initiative. I mean, uh, thank God you weren't selling pot. That's, oh, I ne- that yeah. would have been a whole nother. No, I never. I think that's what I mean. Like I never, ever would have done that. But it never it's occurred just glass to me. Work. Yeah. It never occurred to me that it was drug paraphernalia. <laughs> there's a fight, you know, there's a very small line. I mean, it's like a vase. You were selling vases exactly. that you could s- smoke out yeah. of. Oh my God. That is a hoot. I'm glad you didn't go to jail. And I'm glad the cops didn't come. Me too. Um, you mentioned that you didn't get along with the people in your school. And I feel like yeah. I quickly read over some of your stories, but I don't like to like fully read them. Basically, our producers reach out every time we have a guest and then yeah. our guests kind of give them the prompts. I think, though, your next story. I don't even know what. what did, oh, my God. What did I say? Something about you didn't get along with the girls at your school. I didn't get along with the girls at my school, but I don't remember what I said about that. <laughs> That's the, Let's see. Yeah. What did I say? That's the other thing. I, I don't when you when I heard that this needs to be like stories from your childhood, I'm like, oh, my God, I blocked out most of my childhood, honestly. <laughs> oh, dude. Same. Same. And then I blacked out college, but that's just because I was smoking out of your right. paraphernalia too much. Yes. Um, the girls in high school hated you. Yeah, they did. Um, and one time you snuck out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That sucked. They hated me. I, so so I, I moved to this community on Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, you have to understand, is very small. It's an island off the coast of Massachusetts. There's no bridge. It is straight up an island. It's a 45 minute ferry ride to get there. So the people. Have you been back, by the way? I meant to ask you that. To Cabo and Martha's Vineyard? Yeah, I don't really go to Cabo anymore because, like, it sounds ridiculous, but like, number one, I've been there, done that. Like, I'm going to spend the money to travel. I'm going to go somewhere new. But also, it's sort of, it's a little triggering for me. Yeah. Um, I'm triggered for you. I'm never going to Cabo. I had a friend who was killed by the cartel there not that long ago like I oh mean my yeah god I know this is I know it's crazy uh, we're gonna need a part two three and four guys I really let us know if you want so wow. I don't go back to Cabo really I've been like I said I've been there yeah. my mom loves Cabo she goes every year she loves it she goes back and sees all her friends and I still have a ton of friends there I just wow. we don't I don't know I've, I'm sort of like just yeah. in a different phase of my life fair enough. but Martha's Vineyard you know it's such a small community. It's like 15,000 people in the winter or something like that, that live there, actually live there year round. So these kids were like born in the same hospitals together. Okay. They went to the Mm -hmm. same preschools. They went to the same kindergartens, the same elementary. Mm -hmm. They're tight like this. So I moved to Martha's Vineyard like two months into freshman year. So like everyone's starting high school together. And then I show up and all the boys were like very much like, and by the way, when I, when I moved there, like I didn't look like this. I had like hot pink hair. Like I was like kind of punk rock. And, but, but I was new. I was fresh baked. Okay. Sure. So, I mean, I could have showed up with a paper bag on my head and every boy would be like, who's this? You know? So immediately all the girls were like this bitch. Totally. Um, and so really nobody, nobody liked me. And so I, I was able to make like one friend and she was kind of naughty friend. She was like the girl who did sneak out and did drink and did smoke. And like, I did all those things too in Cabo with my friends, but I was much more subdued in Martha's Vineyard. So anyway, done that. You're like the old lady. Basically. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, we're going to a house party. Um, where's the club? Yeah. Um, (laughs) 
pretty bad. Where's the bar? We, what do you mean you can't go to the bar here? Oh, <laughs> I go sure. To the bar every weekend. Totally culture shock. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, super. I was going to the bar all the time, not getting drunk or anything, but like that's where we would hang out. Huh. Like they wouldn't serve us alcohol, but like we would hang out at the bar. And I, like, I don't know, it was weird. It was a weird life down there. So it was major culture shock, but I had this one girlfriend who was naughty and I stayed the night at her house one night and she's like, we're sneaking out. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's go. I mean, what else we got to do? It's sure. freezing here. So we go, we, we party, we're like going from different place to different, different house to different house, driving all around the island. I'm getting schnockered sh- on um, Malibu rum. Oh. <gasps> just a bot. I just remember drinking a bottle oh. of like Malibu rum, like by yeah. a tree. Yep. Yeah. So one of the girls at one of these parties thought, j- just was like, I'm going to get some Onya. And they did. And they called my house and they were like, is Leah home? And this was like, at, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. At, no, it was in, it was earlier mean that, like midnight, girls. one o'clock. Me, mean. mean girls. They called my house. like, is Leah there? My mom's like, no, she's at a sleepover. And um, they're like, no, she's not. And then basically like hung up the phone. And so my mom. Mean. My mom's kind of gnarly. Like she goes into like mama bear mode real fast. So she, but it's all very dramatic. So like she called the police. Oh God. Do you know how embarrassing that is? So, like terrible. picked up from a party that like you've snuck out to. It's like three in the morning and like the police show up and have to take you home. So it was not. <laughs> so yeah, so that happened. <laughs> and then and then the next day I just remember being so hungover. Oh, oh yeah. So that Malibu hungover. rum is gonna do that to you. Too. And she Aww. loved it. She loved it. I think my grandmother was in town or something, and, and she was like, We're taking her to the chocolate factory to tour the chocolate factory on the island. And it's like you walk in and it just smells like oh. candy and chocolate. And like I wanted to die. Die. I wanted to die. And but she was living for it. She's basically like, This is what you get. Oh my but, god. Yeah, all those bitches, man. Ah, All those high school bitches. I was going to say, where are they now? But my guess is they're still there. Um, Yeah, probably. I don't right? even know. I don't keep up with anybody, honestly, from the island. I have a couple people that I was friends with. But honestly, like, I just, like, hunkered down, hung out with my 60-year-old friend that I lived with, knitted, baked, and I got a job. No kidding. Job. What did you do for work? I was, um, I worked at, you know, Carly Simon. Yeah. You're so vain. I worked at her. She had a clothing store in Martha's Vineyard. No kidding. And it was like, yeah. And it was like really fab. And all the presidents would come in with their families with, um, during the summer and stuff. So I got a job there and I basically was like, I'm working my way out of it. Okay. And I saved a shit ton of money and that helped me move to California at 17. Dude, I'm like, so I've always loved you, obviously. Oh my but, God. But like, I'm just like. I'm so blown away by you. The story of your life is fascinating it's and it's so layered and um, you're amazing. Like what a... Oh my gosh. Oh my God. And when did you get into interior design? Um, when did I... So, okay. So then I ended up in Los Angeles and my, basically my parents were finally like, you have to go to college. And I was like, fine, I'll go to the Fashion Institute. That sounds fun. So I went to FITM, the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising and 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 it was really just so that my parents would keep like helping support me a little bit so that I could go on like castings and stuff, you know, like whatever young girls do in LA. And, um, I met Mary, one of my, I met Mary, my business partner. Ah, um, in yeah. FITM. I in didn't FITM. know that. I didn't know that. Yes. So we met in a, <laughs> a, I think it was like a draping class or something, but I remember it specifically like, we both were lost, couldn't find the, couldn't find the class. And she was looking for the same class and we we're like, okay, I guess we'll just team up and go there together. Um, and then that's the rest is history. So wow, we wow, fast wow. friends and we hung out all the time and we decided to start a YouTube channel together called Fabulous on a Budget because, you know, we were broke college students and yeah. I mean, that Rumble, the rest is history. No, but that's when we started doing, we're like, how are we going to grow this channel? And we decided that we were going to partner with bigger YouTubers and we would make over their space. 
Yes. And you were the that's first, what you were really the first to do that. And now it's like, there's a lot of people doing that. And I you- remember, I remember talking to our like YouTube managers and being like, look, we've got this idea. We're going to go, we're going to collab. We're going to make over these spaces. All we need is sponsors. And they looked at us like we were crazy. I'm like, come on. Like, what if Ikea could donate this? Or what if like apartment to be or do and nobody wanted any part of it. They were like, uh, we don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. And I'm, and I think back on that now and I'm like, Oh, how times have changed. Oh girl. This is another conversation that I would love to have with you sometime because just the evolution of it and our place in it too is so interesting. And our, our, continuous need to try to like continue to evolve to stay relevant is so interesting and now all these younger people coming up and basically doing what we were doing but doing it even more extravagantly and bigger and uh, yeah it's just um please let's have that conversation I would love to have a conversation sometime honestly I'm like because I'm having an identity crisis and I need to figure out what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, same, but I think that's the artist's life that will just continue no, to like damn. to question. Yeah. It's always going to be like that. But um, yeah. if we're going to take a quick break and if you'll stick around, we have um, viewers who submit stories that they've been holding on to all these years, secrets that they didn't tell their parents. So I would love to read some of them and see if maybe they either prompt another story or if we have some sort of point of view now that you are a mom of two, because I'm sure your point of view has shifted as well. That's true. All right. So we will be right back. I feel like we just all needed a break for a moment. We needed to take a moment, take a deep breath, and process all of that. Also, I wanted to give you guys a huge thank you from me and my mom for being here. As you guys know, this is just a new podcast for us. So everything you do, uh, listening, rating, reviewing really, really helps. And we really, really appreciate it. Also, if you could share it with your friends and family, that would be awesome. Let us know what you think in the reviews and uh, maybe we'll read your review in the next episode. Also, we're about to share your stories. I've mentioned this before, but if you want to share your story and have us read it out loud and respond to it on the podcast, head over to ungroundablepodcast.com and let her rip, folks. Let her rip. Also, we're on Patreon. If you didn't already know, come hang out with the other members, get early episode access, check out the bonus episodes with a whole nother show that I'm doing with my husband, Jeff. Um, And it's really the only place that you can get the full video podcast and more. Also, guys, like I just mentioned, um, available now is, in fact, a new bonus episode of Sidebar the show that I'm doing with Jeff and it is weird and it is fun and it is uh, certainly unfiltered so uh, head over to Patreon to get that and also guys we are doing a quarterly Patreon hangout and there's one coming up on January 13th at 4.30 Pacific Standard Side. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, it is an exclusive, non-recorded, unfiltered, live, interactive experience. And uh, you never know what you're going to get. So I hope that you guys will join us on over there. Okay, we got to get back to Leah and we got to get back to these stories. Let's do it. We are back and I am just like still jaw dropped. All right. So here we go. Fan submissions. And if you guys want to submit your very own stories, head over to ungroundablepodcast.com. We're really enjoying reading these and uh, y'all are wild. So our first submission is I used to play hide and seek with my sister. I tell her to hide and then I count to 10. Then I'd sit in the den watching TV while she sat in the closet or something. (laughs) (laughs) That's so mean. I feel like. Is. I feel like siblings do like crazy shit with each other. They're so mean. Are you so I have two boys. They're seven and three, and they're gnarly. Are, give me an example, please. Okay, here's one. So when we moved into this new house, I the rule is if we have people over, you either go upstairs to your like area or your room, your player, or you're outside. Upstairs or outside. We like get you there's plenty of place for you to roam. We have seven acres here. Goodbye. Love that. Unless you're bleeding, don't come, don't come back in. I so, love that. So we're having wine and I've said this to the kids, go outside, like, unless you need us, whatever. So then my seven-year-old comes running into the house, sobbing. And I'm like, what's going on? What happened? And he's like, Bubby hit me in the head with a baseball bat. Oh, no. So there's, they have one of those like motorized gators, like little um, tractors. And the, my, <laughs> the older one was driving it and the little one wanted it. And the big one didn't want to share. And so he's chasing the big one up the driveway with a baseball bat in his hand. 
chasing after him and whacks him in the head when he finally catches up with him to get him off the tractor. And I'm like, cool. Just a He's little three. concussion. Just a, li- just a little baby concussion. What a great swing, though. I the know. kid's got a good arm. Somebody came up to me in the, in the grocery store, too. I had them both in the grocery store. And they were fucking with each other. They, it's obnoxious. It's never, it never ends. And the little one swung at him. And this woman goes, he had long hair at the time. And she goes, I just got to tell you, she's got a great arm. <laughs> and I'm like, well, thank you. It's a boy. And yes, so... I hear from parents. I, I hear from parents that the grocery store is like the worst. It's the worst. They want yeah. everything. But I, I see like the hospital in our future soon. Like definitely stitches for sure. <laughs> That's a boy thing. I think. Yeah. Um, all right. Second is I would watch porn on the family computer in the living room. That's bold. That's, that's really bold. That's first of all, why? Why? <laughs> like, yeah. I guess maybe if they just had one computer. Or like they thought, yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, why? We need oh my God, to you're going to fa- find porn. No. With your boys eventually, right? And then, and like the crusty underwears. It's going to happen. I know. Oh my God, you're a boy mom. I it's know. A, that's a whole new. I know. And they're, and they're all about private parts. Like they love it. They just talk about their penises all the time. But my, <laughs> my oldest came up to us the other day and was like, you know what? Vaginas are pretty cool. They look like, <laughs> he goes, he goes, they look like mini butts. Honestly, they do. He goes, I wish I could have a mini butt. I wish I could have two butts. And I was like, oh my God. Here we go. Oh my God. Like, here we go. I remember discovering that though. Like I remember um, hiding in like the pantry with one of my friends and we like got the dictionary and like looked up the word sex. Like that was like, cause we didn't obviously didn't have computers. Like, so you didn't know, like that's how we discovered it. Oh my God. Can I tell you a quick story about something that happened to me recently? That's fucking horrifying. Please. Does it involve so- mini butts? It does. Yes, kind of. <laughs> so our seven-year-old walked in on us the other day. <gasps> and it was not, we were not in the act. We were sure. doing the before act. Sure. And there was no covers, nothing. Like, first of all, we thought we'd lock the door. It didn't latch. So he saw full on mom with a dick in her mouth. And that's his first, and that will forever be his first, like, experience with sexuality is mom with a dick in her mouth. How fucking horrible is that? I I have a friend who that happened to and her daughter walked in in as well. And I was horrified for her and I'm horrified for you. How did it go? What did you do? It went really horrible. I (laughs) I just immediately jumped under the covers. Sure. And my, and my husband, I, I have to give him big props. Like he dealt with it. He was like, Hey buddy, like this is our private time. He's, but he had, he was like, why is she kissing your privates? And he was like, this, this killed me. He goes, is she going to get sick because she was kissing where the pee comes out? <laughs> it's, a, it's a valuable question. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So oh I was in God. the bathroom basically all morning. Cause I just, I, I, I was shook. Okay. And, and I'm not proud of that. But my, my husband really did handle it really well. And we were like, look, like, you know, if you have any questions, you can talk to us. This is a private thing. This is what two people do when they're in love. Like, you know, the spiel, right? But like forever, my son, his first experience with sexuality is mom with a dick in her mouth. Yeah, terrible. He might become a comedian. You never know. I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Usually At least channel, channel it for good, right? Yeah. Like, horrible. I haven't told anybody that story either. <laughs> well, let me just say you were an absolute delight. I could go on forever. And I, in fact, would like to come back and have another episode with you because you're just such a gem. You're doing so many amazing things for people that want to find you um, and like look at your work. Where should they go and what's next for you or what are you excited about? So I'm, I love Instagram. I know people are on the TikTok. I love it. You do thrifting Thursdays. Yes. Yeah, so I do thrifty Thursday over on Instagram. You can follow me at living with Leah. We um, just wrapped a seven episode docu-series about our house build on Amazing. the design network. So Amazing. that's been really fun. The whole idea was like, my dad and I are building a house together and we did, and it took two years and it was super gnarly. But it was also really fun and funny. So that show um, just finished airing, but you can see all the episodes are all online. It's a streaming service, thedesignnetwork.com. 
And yeah, so that's been really good. And then this is going to sound so weird, but like I'm getting into regenerative farming. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. Wow, that's, that's like fantastic. my fantastic. Yeah. And what I, does that even mean? So it deals a lot of like with soil health. And I basically had this um, epiphany the other day. I was like, the world does not need another interiors influencer. The world needs me to teach my kid how to grow a tomato. The world needs me to figure out how to compost my neighbor's food scraps, like that kind of stuff. So I've been focusing, you know, about like, you know, regenerating our land with cover crop seeds. And I I watched this amazing documentary called Kiss the Ground on Netflix and it blew my mind. And basically the answer to climate change is all in the soil and it's super easy to fix. So one weird thing I've been doing is, have you heard of vermicomposting? No. No. Okay, it's you com- it's worm compost. Ooh. So you it's yes, it's incredible and I'm obsessed and I basically am obsessed with worm poop. So like I've co- done all this like Hollywood dreams, right? And now I'm in the country playing with worm poop and I love it. Basically, it's a biological garbage disposal. You put your uh your food scraps in there, the worms eat it. They go to town, they they eat all the food and then they poop out. It's called black gold or worm castings. And it's the most incredible potent fertilizer you could ever have for your plants. Whoa, whoa, they, whoa. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's like anyone can have a worm bin. I have it like in little bins from Home Depot. I've heard of people keeping them under their kitchen counter. I heard someone kept them under their bed once, but they're Ooh. fun. It's, they're, um, it's amazing. It's Do you awesome. have this on your Instagram? Um, I do have it on my Instagram. I definitely have it on, um, Finn family farm. I have another account called Finn family farm, which is the house that we just built that deals a little bit more in like that kind of content, because I realized that, you know, people are following me on living with Leah for more interior stuff. And people are following me on Finn family farm for more of the regenerative stuff. I love that. I will dive in soon. And I mean, your journey is just amazing. And, um, at some point I'm going to want to write a movie about you. So get ready for that. Yeah. I was like, I should write a book, but I don't know. I mean, um, yes, hands down. We'll be looking forward to that. Let's chat about that soon. You should absolutely do that. That's it's beautiful. weird. To, it's weird to tell the story. Honestly, I had never really have told the story publicly. So, well, honestly, thank you very much for sharing, yeah. and um, I've just really enjoyed my time with you. So, thank same. you. Same, yeah. same, same, same. All right, hope to have you back again soon. Anytime. It was great catching up with you. Hell yeah! Lock your doors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel like every time we do this, I'm like, that's the craziest one yet. And yet today I'm like, that's the craziest one yet. I'm so grateful for Leah and for uh, all of her stories and for her willingness to share with us. I just think that is awesome. And there's just so much more to explore there. So I would love to have her back. And if you guys want to have her back as well, let me know. And how, you ask? How can you let me know? Well, you guys, you can chat with us and our fun human content family. Uh, over at Instagram and TikTok because we're hip and happening at Human Contents Pods or you can directly contact my team over at UngroundablePodcast.com. Today, we are giving a shout out to one of our listeners who gave feedback um, on YouTube because we also do clips on Mondays on YouTube. CY444 on YouTube said, I absolutely love your back and forth and the unfiltered commentary. Can't wait for more episodes. And just your luck, there's more episodes coming. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave the comment. Like I said before, it really means the world and it also really helps our shows. So as a reminder, we are on YouTube Uh, with clips every Monday. Also, like I mentioned before, on Patreon, there's lots of cool perks happening over there. That episode of Sidebar with me and Jeff. There's hangouts with other Ungroundable member communities, and I am active in it over there. There's early episode access. You guys know how Patreon works. There's also exclusive live stream hangouts with me and my friends, like I mentioned before, and it's the only place to get the video version of episodes and so much more. Head over to patreon.com slash Podcast. In today's Patreon roulette, we like to pull out a name of one of our latest and greatest Patreon uh, subscribers. And today we are giving a special shout out to Amanda Jo Polk. You're awesome. I always see you supporting me and it truly, truly means the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Amanda. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, I'm your host, Lisa Schwartz, and my mom 
Hopefully we'll be back soon in action. Special thanks to our guest, Leah A. Finn. Our executive producers are me, Lisa Schwartz, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. And our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omer Benzvi. And our theme song is performed by the amazing Leah Donovan Jones. This is Ungrandable with Lisa Schwartz, and it is a human content production. Yeah, my jaw is still dropped. Seriously, that was wild. Thank you.